Ciao Zeme and what's up world? It is time for another Twitter question. It's Twitter question number six and it is a good one because I asked it myself. <laughs> it is, why the fuck are most artists in the history of art male? I wonder. So let's stick into art history. I believe it's ludicrous that women are so badly underrepresented in the history of art. So let's look a bit into art history. Before 1985, pretty much no one asked this question except the female artists themselves. It was the guerrilla girls that started protesting behind guerrilla masks against the art industry. The reason was the exhibition, an international survey of recent painting and sculpture at the MoMA in 1984, at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the MoMA. They showed works of 165 artists that included a staggering 15 female artists. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. Anyway, they stated quite famously that the only way that a woman can enter a museum is naked, or more precisely, in a nude painting or act photography. So in nude paintings and act photography, over 80% of all portraits or portraitees are female. If the MoMA would have shown an exhibition of previous centuries, so this would probably not have been an issue at that time. So like for instance, the 16th century in Europe, most or pretty much all of social, political and economic power, all the important positions were occupied by men who pretty much had the thinking of a 16th century entity. Thus, they decided which jobs people are allowed to pursue. And they had the misconception that women do not possess natural artistic talent. Therefore, for a very long time, women were not allowed to enter the first art academies, workshops and curate arts themselves. Only very few cases made it really past these brutal hurdles. One was the very incredible Artemisia La pronuncia corretta è Artemisia Gentileschi, grazie. She had her own workshop with male apprentices. So in the height of the Baroque period. Another one would for instance be Angelica Kaufmann. She was a member of two academies and co-founded the Royal Academy of Art in London in the 18th century. What a powerhouse! So the classical museum having an underrepresentation of female artists is one thing. It's just really hard to change and by now we know it and they try to do it but this is bloody difficult to go backwards and find pieces that are mostly destroyed or not in any public you know listings and stuff like that there could be a more diverse approach to our western art history though so the reason is other cultures have different approaches to what they think was beauty was standards what was handicraft and how they approached different topics you know think about the japanese tale of genji the genji monogatari the story was written around 1000 CE and is a cornerstone regarding dramatic storytelling and courtly intrigue. You have no idea how many contemporary series and novels use her core storyline almost one on one. And it's a thousand years old. So there is a lot of potential to also change the approach that we have backwards. The contemporary collections are a completely different thing. Already in the 19th century, they engaged in academic disputes, studied in workshops and ac academies. They created art groups and such. They were so successful on their own that they brought the state and royal art academies to the point where they had to accept female artists as well because they were so amazing and important by themselves already. <laughs> so this raises the question. If they started to have the chance of also studying arts before the turn of the modern art, why on earth are there only so few women well known in the development of modern and contemporary art? For instance, if you hear surrealism, you think about Salvador Dali and René Magritte. Why not about Dorothea Tanning? Her name is only somewhat known thanks to this year's exhibition at the Tate. So why do an Andrea Fraser or Regina José Galindo need to use their bodies to the nude to the extreme just to get attention okay let me rant for a second what about angelica kaufmann what about frida Kahlo, Merit oppenheim grace hartigan philomena marano 
Alles Neil, Fede Galicia, Uemura Schoen, Luisa Roldan, Amrita Shergil, Emily Kame Kungare, Anna Therbush, Zhao Fei, Lin Tian Niao, Guan Dao Sheng, Xiao Lu, Li Shuang, Kate Kolwitz. God, there are so many! <sighs> so why? One point is that also during the 20th century, like most of the positions in art, in the art industry were occupied by men. So only over the last 30 years this started to change and today's art historians are well aware of that fact and they are more thinking more diversely, in, not just regarding gender but also regarding cultures and locations to really broaden the spectrum and actually add different approaches and views to the same topics that we just took for granted for like hundreds of years. And it is exciting to see that there is change and it is happening slowly, but it's coming. But we will need so many more guerrilla girls and guerrilla boys to really get to the point where we have a different view towards the entire arts world. So how do we change that? So if you're an artsy person or an art lover, my request to you will be to start building a vocabulary or a canon of artists that just contains both sexes. Doing this is very important because for one, it will change the way how you approach art because male and, and female artists will tend to gravitate towards different solutions for the same problem or approach that they have towards an art piece. So you yourself will broaden your view on how to see or approach a, a topic or an, a craft because there are different approaches done by male and female. So the more diverse your own knowledge is, the more holistic you can think about an artwork and approach it. Another point is that it will slowly ed educate and change your surroundings and the people around you will also start to use the names of, of females and males differently when talking about art around you. This is a slow chain, yes, but the more people that will just start to use other names when thinking about the same things, it will spread, it will gradually spread and we'll get to the point where it's just normal that everyone does stuff like that and thinks like that. So yeah, there is a lot to do still and we have a ton of work ahead. So I'm looking forward to next time. So thanks for watching and see you around. Bye.